1997, God called me to study Bible prophecy, and what I did was I told God I'm going to, I'm going to unknow everything that I think I know. I was raised a pre-trib, pre-millennial, and I went to an amillennial Bible college. Okay, so I mean, I, and I was taught all of that stuff, but I decided that I was going to throw everything out and let and just ask God questions. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee sh and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. So if I told God, God, I already know this part, let's move on to the next, you know, I'm not going anywhere. And so God made me forget everything that I ever learned. And I'm glad that I did that because, and I encourage you to do that. So, I mean, I may say some things that you may not agree with today, you might agree with tomorrow, or I might say some things that you may not agree with and never agree with. Jason's your pastor, he's your overseer, he, is your, he watches over your soul, and, um, and you just go to him and say, Pastor, you know, I, I follow you, and I, that's what I want you to do. So I'm just here, I have a help ministry. I'm here to help. Did you bring a Bible? Amen. All right, get it out, let's... Let's see, amen, King James. Um, and, the, and the new King James is not the King James. Uh, second, turn to Second Peter chapter 2. I've got my fingers in about a half a dozen. If I had six, 12 fingers, I'd be having them in 12 spots in the Bible. But uh, here's what drives me. Okay, here's what provokes me. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be. So he said there were false prophets. There's, there's a key right there for you. Study the Old Testament. Study what Jesus dealt with. Because Solomon said, The thing that hath been is the thing that shall be. Our guide to what's coming down the road is right here in your hand. And I mean every... They asked me the question uh, yesterday. How much of the Bible is prophecy? I said, Genesis to Revelation. It is a sure word of prophecy. Once God taught me Bible typology, it opened up everything for me. And I'm, I'm just, I believe, and I can, you, you ask me a question about some passage in the scripture, I'm going to give you an example out of the Bible. Us pastors, we like to use examples when we teach and preach. And sometimes they're out of our own experience, sometimes they're out of somebody else we know, but the only inspired examples from God himself are given to us in the scripture. So with every doctrine in the Bible, I guarantee you there is a picture of it in your Bible where God gives you a clear example of what it looks like. The first time I encountered that was I was learning typology. I was learning the language. And it dawned on me that Goliath had, was six cubits tall. There's a number. And his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. There's another number. His brother had six fingers, and on each hand, six toes on each foot. And David said, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as them. And I went, The beast is a lion and a bear, in Revelation 13. And I went, Goliath is the beast. He's the Antichrist. Because the beast, in Revelation 13, has a deadly wound in his head. Where did David hit Goliath? Right where the mark is going to go, right in the forehead. And so I went, there's my first lesson in typology right there. David is Christ. He's the shepherd. He's the king. In fact, Ezekiel 37 calls Jesus David. Calls him that by name. And he's the son of David. So I, I started learning typology and I started learning the, the pictures and the shadows that God drew in the Bible. So when he said there were false prophets... Go study all these false prophets in the Bible. Go study what they did and what they said and then how they were, how they were dealt with. Um, did Saul see Samuel from the witch of Endor? Nope. I used to think it and I don't anymore. He was a God that ascended up out of the earth. That was a familiar spirit and he is a picture of the false prophet who rose up out of the earth. Okay? God turned him over to that, and, and Saul represents probably about 80% of the churches in this area, if not more. God has taken his spirit out of those churches, and, and an evil spirit has gone in those places, but they think it's God. They think it's Jesus, but it's not. So, that, I mean, there's your lesson there. 
Look at verse, uh, uh, many shall follow, verse 2, many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil and spoken of. That means they'll speak bad about the King James Bible. They'll say, we don't, they'll, they'll say, we use all the translations here. Do you use King James? No, we don't use that one. And they'll talk, they'll talk it down. They'll speak evil of it. Turn to, um, uh, let's see here, where have I got my finger here? Turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that to be not soon shaken. The Bible talks about a shaking coming. Revelation chapter 6. He's going to shake both the heavens and the earth. And so I think the language, see, one of the things that really turned me on to the King James was it has a consistent language structure that you can use. If you see a stone somewhere in the Bible, study that stone. Look what, what did David use to bring Goliath down? Stone, uh, and Christ is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to them that be disobedient at the word. And so um, there's, there's a shaking coming. That you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, is that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any Christian bookstore. Let no man deceive you by Christian uh, radios, networks. Let uh, I'll tell you what Noah Hutchings told me. Noah Hutchings uh, was the man who led Southwest Radio Church down in Oklahoma City. Godly man, I loved him to death. And he actually, I didn't tell everybody this, he offered me his job before he died. And I turned it down. But he told me, he said, Michael, he said, we used to be on 150 radio stations across America. And he said, we were just, I mean, we were seeing souls saved and everything like that. And he said, what happened was all these big Christian radio companies started buying out these locally owned AM Christian radio stations where they had local pastors feeding local congregations and local people and local music groups. And he said, what's happened is these big conglomerates like Bot Radio and Crawford Broadcasting, they get in, they buy all of these stations up, and then they put their guys on, and, they're, and it's just like the papacy. They're leading everybody from the top down. So all the cities around America are not hearing local pastors. They're hearing the hirelings that are coming out of these big stations. Okay, that is exactly what's going on. Same way in the publishing companies, same way in the denominations. I came out of, I was raised in a denomination. I can't, I can't say that was wrong. I mean, that's where God put me. But when I saw what was going on, and as they began to move away from these godly hymns that we sing, when they began to, when I had to listen to a preacher, at the youth camp that I was saved at when I was nine years old, preach five sermons to teenagers and not one time quoted a verse out of the Bible. When I had to listen to that and my kids had to listen to that, I said, I'll never come back. And I had to leave the land of my nativity just to follow God. So we had to come out, okay? So that, that's exactly what's going on everywhere. For that day shall not come except there come a what? Think of things. Tell me. L let me get some feedback. Think of things in the Bible that fell. Judas, Judas fell. After he was cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. And finally his body rotted and fell. Somebody else that fell. Eli, yes, he did. He fell which direction? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> these guys in these churches hit people on the head. What direction they go? In the Masonic Lodge, when you're a candidate and you're in the third degree, they're giving you the third degree. That's where that comes from. You play the part of a character by the name of Hiram Abiff. But Hiram Abiff is not the Hiram Abiff of the Bible. Hiram Abiff is somebody else. And Hiram Abiff receives a wound in his head and he falls backwards. And then the master mason will reach down with the grip of the lion's paw. Do you know what David said when he was talking to Saul? He said, God saved me from the grip of the lion's paw. Who's the lion? It ain't Jesus. Okay. 
And they raised that man back from the dead with the strong grip of the lion's paw. And he now is resurrected. And he believes that he gets to stand before the great architect of the universe with his mason's apron on. And God's going to accept him into heaven because of his good deeds. They tell you it's not a religion. They're lying through their teeth. Okay? Somebody else that fell in the Bible. How art thou... Lucifer. Who else? This is good. Think about it. Think about things that fall in the Bible. Stars are going to fall. Look at this. A falling away. Dagon fell twice. Okay? So whenever you see that, start... Look at his eyes. You ought to see this guy. He's got... got Nebuchadnezzar's face fell. His visage fell. Okay? Boom! There it is. So now you're learning typology. You're learning that these stories that you learned that were taught in Sunday school or that you read, they, they mean something more than just history. They are the future. They are things that are going to happen again. Uh, the falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. So on YouTube... There's probably a thousand videos that says the Antichrist revealed. Don't waste your, don't watch them. Don't waste your time. They don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. But he's going to be revealed. The son of perdition who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God. Well, we know the Holy Ghost is God. We know that Jesus is God. We know that God is God. And we also know the Bible is God. So any place... Any place in any church or any radio program or any book or any YouTube video or any Facebook post where a man exalts himself above this Bible by saying, now, they, they did not translate the Bible correctly here, and I'm going to change that. That is a spirit of Antichrist that exalts itself above everything that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. No, look in verse 4. Look how many times the word God is mentioned there. How many? Four. There's fourth kingdom is coming. The man of sin, that fourth beast that Daniel saw, is the fourth kingdom, he said. And that's what you see here. You see a clue. Paul said four times exactly where he talked about 2 Corinthians 11. Another gospel, Galatians 1, another gospel, Galatians 1, any other gospel, any other gospel. Four times in your Bible, a different gospel is referenced. How many gospel writers were there? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Think about the number four, things that are related to the number four. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against what? Spirits. Spiritual wickedness in high places. So all of that connects together. When you see four things in the Bible, know that it's going to reference either the gospel, the false gospel, the fourth kingdom, Christ's kingdom, and so on. Uh, I'll give you this. How many blood types are there? You could have guessed four, because I've been talking about the number four, right? A, B, A, B. Yeah, and in Minnesota, it's all. <laughs> Down in Arkansas, it's ow, okay? But anyway, it's O. And it, watch this now. Out of the four, which one can be a universal donor? You see, every time you see four things in the Bible, the fourth one's always different. And out of the three blood types, it's the O blood type that's universal donor, and that's a picture of the gospel. Because instead of Christ's blood just being for those who are of his own blood, the Jews, Christ's blood is for who? Everybody. Isn't that beautiful? I love this stuff. Amen? Remember, oh, anyway, let's move on. Um, look at verse, um, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity. Study the word mystery or mysteries in the Bible. Mystery. The word mystery itself is mentioned 22 times in the Bible. The number 22 is the number for Revelation. Book of Revelation has 22 chapters. Bible has 66 books, 22 times 3. And every time the word mystery is found in the Bible, it always reveals that mystery. Paul said, be not ignorant of this mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. 
all through the Bible. Jesus, the very first time it was used was in the parable of the seed and the sower. And Jesus said, I'm going to show you mysteries. Uh, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So study mysteries in the Bible. Uh, the Catholic Church is a mystery religion. It's always talking about the mystery of this, the mystery of that. So it's related to this. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. It works in the Catholic Church. It works in all these other churches. works in the Masonic Lodge. works in secret societies. Uh, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume. Now, I don't know fully, 100%, what this passage means, but there's a picture of it. There's a picture of this passage right here. Hold that place in 2 Thessalonians and turn to 1, because you mentioned Eli, turn to 1 Samuel 4. Remember what Paul said, there's a falling, a mystery of iniquity, The man of sin is going to be revealed and something is taken out of the way in 1 Samuel 4. My eyes, where did he go? He ran off. My eyes did what his did. His, you should have seen his eyes. He went like that. My wife, it used to scare her to death. Back years ago, God was just pouring this stuff in me. I mean, it was just coming all the time. I'd be sitting in the living room and I'd go, ooh, like that. And I'd jump and run off, go find a Bible somewhere. It, she, and then she went. Ah, never mind. First uh, Samuel 4. Look at verse, oh, verse 12. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. When he came, lo, Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside watching for his heart trembled for the ark of God. What is the ark of God? What is it? It's the ark of the covenant. It's, the, it's where the covenant was. What else is it? It's the seat. It is God's throne. It is his mercy seat. Remember what happened to Saul? God took his mercy from him. Think about it. So right here, the mercy seat has been taken. Okay? Um, He sat on a seat by the wayside, his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, what meaneth the noise of this tumult? The man came in hastily and told Eli. And Eli was 98, at 90 and 8 years old. And his eyes were dim. What is 98? That's 49 times 2. That's 7 times, that's multiple of 7. And his eyes were dim that he could not see. He's blind. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? The messenger answered and said, Israel's fled before the Philistines. Philistines are a type, a shadow, a picture. They're always the enemy. Always. They are never the friends. They're the enemy. They represent, I think, the devil's kingdom, fourth kingdom, the world. You can just make so many applications out of this. There has been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is what? Boom. It's been taken. The mercy seat, God's throne, the mercy, uh, the covenant. The covenant is gone. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell off from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break. And he died for he was an old man and heavy. And he had judged Israel. There's a, there's a number there, 40. 40. What else happens in 40s in the Bible? Moses. Moses. Yes. Moses up on the Mount Sinai twice. Moses' life is always divided in 40s. What else? 40 days and 40 nights, the flood waters. What else? Jesus fasted 40 days. Nineveh. 40, yes. Um, uh, Israel wandered. 40 years in the world because the spies were there 40 days so that's connected to that okay so i mean you just get you a bunch of notebooks and just make one page called 40 and then write down all these passages where god has 40 something in it and then just study that or just lead it let it lay and then one day you'll wake up in the middle of the night out of your sleep and you go there it is right there amen, amen. or You can get 16 English translations of the Bible and not know a thing. Right. Right. Amen. 
Amen. Now watch this. So 40 years. Uh, look at verse 19. So we have a falling. We have something taken out of the way. Now we're about to see the man of sin revealed. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, Phineas was a wicked man, was he not? He's a religious wicked man. Was, his wife was with child near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed. 1 Thessalonians 5, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden construction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. That's connected to this. For her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. She named the child Ichabod. What does that mean? The glory is departed from Israel. Ichabod is the man of sin, the son of perdition. So now he's revealed. You see, back, that was back in the day when you didn't know what you were having. Amen? I mean, now they can see, okay, yeah, that's a boy. Yeah, he's already starting a mustache. I can see that right there. I mean, they can just tell everything now with this stuff. But that was back in the day when the birth, you did not know that child was hidden until the birth. That man of sin is going to be born. I mean, where does he come from? Rises up out of the what? The sea. Revelation 13, he rises up out of the sea. Birth water is seawater. Has the same salinity factor. It's salt water. It's just like an ocean. Okay, uh, what was it? God told Job that in, uh, what was it, Job 38? When the water is issued forth as out of a womb. Okay, so all of that ties together. Uh, let's go back to 2 Thessalonians. I wasn't done with that. Let's see, that was 30 minutes. All right, let's go home now. That was your 30-minute sermon. And then shall that wicked be revealed, and the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And what is, what is it that comes out of the Lord's mouth? The sword, which is what? Okay, you want to get rid of an antichrist somewhere? Give, get the Bible out. Amen. Amen. Shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Why? Darkness hates the light. How do you overcome darkness? Turn the light on. That's how you overcome darkness. You have dark areas in your mind. There are things that you don't know. There, there are areas. I've learned this. You know, I was raised in church all my life, but there was things I, I wasn't sure about. So, I mean, some things I know some things I know are right, some things I know are wrong, and there's always gray areas. The more you'll study your Bible, the more you'll ask God, the more you'll pray, God starts taking these things out of that gray, and he'll put them in, yes, this is, you can do this, or no, you cannot do this. Okay, It's always with the light. The light will show you that. So then he says, uh, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. With all power. God's going to give Satan all power. And signs and what kind of wonders? Lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Um, I've got, I preached this yesterday out there. Um, how men are deceived. Your sin will deceive you. Your personal sins will lie to you. Your own, not somebody else's, not everybody else's. Your sin will lie to you. Your pride will lie to you. Your flesh, your emotions will lie to you. Amen? When they say follow your heart, your heart's desperately wicked and deceitful. Don't follow your heart. Amen? So for this cause, uh, back at verse 10, they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And I am just, man, I'm in touch with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, social media of every kind, because that's where the lies are. And I am amazed 
at what people are falling for. The stupidest, idiotic, goofball thing that somebody can put on YouTube will get a million hits, 400,000 likes, 50,000 comments. Oh, I didn't know this. Thank you for revealing this. It's stupid stuff. And to me, it's setting up the lie. It is setting up that lie. And God said it's going to be such a strong delusion. And I have a friend that a guy called me one time. He said, you got a guy in your church that's teaching flat earth stuff. I said, nah, you're lying to me. He said, I'm going to tell you who it is. And he told me. And I'm texting the guy. Hey, I got a guy on the phone telling me you said the earth is flat. And he sent me back. I have serious doubts. And I went, how did he do that? How did this man, I mean, I know he believes the Bible. He was a scientist. Critical thinker. And I watched some of his videos and I'm going, do you not see your own errors? So I started asking God, God, how can people, rational, logical, thinking people, how can they be turned over to something so goofy? Is the earth being, I sent him a picture. 1946, when we, when we invaded Germany, we took Hitler's V2 rockets, brought them over, took the top off, took the bombs out of them, and some scientists stuck some cameras in there and fired them off. And for the very first time in human history, we had a view of what the Earth looked like from space. They sent this rocket up. They sent several of them and took photographs of the curvature of the earth. First time man had ever actually seen it. And I sent him that picture and I said, is this real or not? I gave him the background, told him what it was. I mean, you can, there was no Photoshop back then. You can, you can trace the, the line of where this photograph come from. And he said, well, that's not evidence. I'm going, it is too. It's part of the scientific process called observation. You observe things. And it's just like being there yourself. And he would not submit that, that that photograph that he was looking at was true. And I said, God, where does that come from? Turn to Ezekiel 14. This is where deception lies. It's not in the brain. If some preacher can convince you of something one day, another preacher can talk you out of it a week later. Okay? Whether it's me, Brother Jason, some of the people we know, some of the people we don't like, or whatever. Many of you, at one point in your life, you believe some of the goofiest, strange things in the world. Okay? But now you've been brought to the Scriptures. Okay? But see, it was not a change in your brain that did it. Romans 10 teaches about how man saved. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall... It's belief in the heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Confession is... Made. You have a picture of that. You have a picture of that in your Bible. Of that very thing. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's the thief on the cross... Who the first thing out of his mouth was, he confessed with his mouth, Lord Jesus. Right. You're the Lord. And if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he believed it. Before Jesus even died, he believed it. Amen. And Jesus said what? This day. Amen? You always have a picture of every doctrine in your Bible. Okay? I like that. Now, Ezekiel 14. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord... The word of the Lord is Jesus. The word of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord is the Bible. Came unto me saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols where? In their heart. So, 
pastor here can be preaching to a congregation of people. Most of them have their heart set right. But there could be some, and there's always going to be some, who you would never know, you would never think, you would never suspect that they've got an idol in their heart because you can't see it there. They hid it. Where do we put the Bible? Thy word have I hid in thy heart. Okay, that way it's there. It is the center of your belief. But if they've got the opposite of the word of God is an idol. And there is a God with every idol. Think of what we were reading there in 2 Thessalonians. The man of sin, the son of perdition in the temple of God. What is the temple of God? It's this body. The heart, the four chamber heart is the throne of God. It's where the four living creatures are. That's why you have four chambers. The sea of glass is the pericardium around the heart. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You're surrounded by a sea of glass. The 24 ribs are the 24 elders that surround the throne of God. The two lungs are the spirit of God. Because you've got from this point here, you've got seven tubes sticking down in your lungs. Isn't that neat? Those are the seven spirits of God. Amen. So here is the throne. Here is the temple of God right here. But they put an idol where God's supposed to be. And God's not there because God will not share his glory with another. So God sees the stumbling blocks. God sees the idols in people's hearts that nobody else sees. And so he said they put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. In other words, God said, Because he's got idols in there and he asked me questions, I'm not going to tell him the truth. I'm not going to let him know the truth. I won't let him have the truth. I'll let people lie to him and I'll let him believe them. So why people go bad or why people stay bad and pretend to be good has nothing to do with what's in their brain, it has everything to do with what they've got in their heart. Maybe, maybe there's somebody here, maybe there's somebody watching online that has some sort of stumbling block in their heart. And there are things that you cannot get. There are things that you won't latch on to. You've heard me preach, you've heard Brother Jason preach, you've heard other preachers preach, and you're not buying it. I'm sorry, but until you bust that idol up and get it out, you'll never know. You'll never know the truth. God will let you be lied to. Somebody say amen. amen. Where else was I going? Matthew 24, turn there. Take a look at that screen. There is actually a day set aside. For world contact. Contact with what? Okay. So Jason said you guys were as crazy as I was. So I'm going to talk about it. Uh, I've made up my mind, by the way. Um, I've been, my wife knows this. I've, I mean, I've had my head in UFOs for the past two months now. And it's something that I didn't really, I mean, I wasn't really purposely trying to do, but I just felt God leading in that direction. And God has opened my eyes to some things. I see some things now that I never saw before in the Word of God. And I know there's a lot of deception when it comes to this, but I know there's not everything that's being told is a lie. Right. And because I can see it now in the Scriptures, I, I, feel, uh, I feel compelled, but I also feel at liberty to share it with people. Uh, you start talking about ETs and UFOs and that, make, that puts you out on the fringe and that's a bunch of garbage and things like that. But I've got a theory. My theory is that every atheist in the world is about to become a believer in the supernatural. I really, I mean, I'm there. I am there, okay? Because the gods are coming down. They're coming up and they're coming down. Uh, think about this. Jesus said, as it was, and that he said that in Matthew 24, he said in verse uh, 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Think about where the waters came. 
in the days of Noah? Where'd they come from? Fountains of the deep. They came up from out of the earth, and then they... Okay, so we know two things are going to happen in the book of Revelation. Revelation 9, a star falls from heaven. Stars are angels, and they're going to open up the pit. That star's been given the key. He didn't steal it. It was given to him. God wants this to happen. God is unleashing hell on earth. So he opens up the key and out of the heart of the earth, out of the depths of the earth, these devils come out and they're androgynous. They're transgendered. They have a face of a man, hair of a woman. Think about it. Think about what happened in the 60s. All of a sudden, men changed, women changed, TV changed, music changed. Everything started changing back then. Now we have this androgynous spirit everywhere. Everywhere. And I think it's related to those devils that are coming up. But then we also know in Revelation 12 that a war takes place in heaven. Michael and his angels fight against the devil and his angels. And uh, how many of those angels fall? A third. How many is that? 33.3. 33 what? Now think about that. There's an innumerable company of angels. Right? And God knows how to cut a third of them off. That's how smart God is. God knows, and he has a name for every one of them. And watch this. Since we know that numbers keep going higher and higher and higher and higher, right? And yet 49 times in your Bible, God is the most high. God's higher than infinity. <laughs> My mind is, I'm just like going. <laughs> Amen. That's how deep this Bible is, amen? But God's going, there's a, one third of an innumerable company of angels is going to fall down to the earth. So they're just like the waters. They're coming up and they're coming down. And they are the flood of ungodliness that David wrote about in the Psalms. The flood of the wicked is coming. Yeah, the windows of heaven, okay? And so, uh, what was I saying? Matthew 24. Um, yeah? No, that wasn't it. Uh, look, where did he talk about? Oh, verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall so show great signs and wonders, in so much that, and here's what I like, it is not possible for the truly elect to be deceived Amen. on this day. Because very does not mean like a higher level than somebody else. You're the saved or you're not. Right. There's not different versions of saved. Right. Okay? God's going to take the weakest of us, the dumbest of us, Amen. the slowest of us, Amen. and he's not going to let us be deceived right. on that day. Amen. So take hope in that, people. Amen. Okay? But he, but he said, if it were possible, he shall deceive the very elect. And he, that's related to 2 Thessalonians 2, 11. 11 is a number for confusion. What's in Genesis 11? Babel. 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 Okay. Um, you know, let's run with that one. God confused their languages, right? That and the, and the thing that hath been is the thing that shall be. So let me take you to Deuteronomy 28. No, Deuteronomy 32. No, Deuteronomy 28. That's, that's where it is. Deuteronomy 28. Uh, a man by the name of John D. Uh, was an advisor, I think, to Queen... One of the queens. can't remember which one. It was before King James. But anyway, John D. was working with another guy, and they were scrying. They had a, a scrying bowl um, or a gazing bowl. And what they would do is like a bowl of mercury or whatever, water or whatever, and they would peer into that and then call forth a, a spirit. And so the, the, there's words for that. Familiar spirit, devil, gods, aliens. 
extraterrestrial because that word works. They are not terrestrial. They're not from here. They're from another place. They are alien to here. And so D was in, was in contact with them. And these angels said that they had a secret language that nobody on the earth knew. And he said it was, it said, and they lied and they said Enoch knew that language. And Enoch was able to do things that nobody else could do. They said Adam knew that language. And that's how Adam, you know, Adam could call forth anything that he wanted. He could create things with the words of his mouth. You'll hear that same doctrine out of the charismatics with their tongues talking. They'll, they'll be talking that stuff and they'll say, I don't know what I'm saying, but that tongue has creative power to it. We believe that we are creating wealth. We're creating health. We're creating, you know, a, a great future for us by speaking these words. Well, the same thing was told to John D. And John D. was in the process of trying to learn this language because he was told that if he could speak this tongue, then he could just create whatever he wanted to. He could open gateways to the stars and do all kinds of magic stuff. Now, look in Deuteronomy 28. Look what God said was going to happen. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. Now, I mean, we, there's the Philistines, there's the Egyptians, there's the Assyrians, there's the Babylonians, there's the Canaanites, Hivites, Perizzites. There's all these different nations. And the word nation itself, both in Hebrew and Greek, speaks of what we would call a race or a genetic type, a genetic line, okay? The Greek word is ethnos, ethnic. So it speaks of a certain genetic type of people. But he said he's going to bring them against thee from far from the end of the earth. Where's the end of the earth? It's a globe, is it not? Where's the end of it? Neil Armstrong bounced off of it. Okay, there is at the very top of the atmosphere, I forgot what the line is called, they actually have a, a name for it. No, it's not the Van Allen belt. But Armstrong used to be a test pilot, and he was piloting one of these rocket planes, and he got up above that line, and all of a sudden his stick won't work. He cannot move, he cannot control that plane because that plane is controlled with air and he doesn't have any and he keeps going and going. So he, he tries to come down and he bounces off the top, the end of the earth. Fortunately, he had rockets on the wings of that thing and he tilted it sideways and sliced himself back into the atmosphere and was able to land that plane safely. Okay, true story. So there is an end to this earth. And God said, they're from there, which means they're not from here. Now, look at this nation. They are as swift as what? The eagle flieth. But what kind of eagle? Earthly eagles or spiritual ones? Ezekiel 1, the cherubs that Ezekiel saw had the face of an eagle and they had wings. And how fast could they go? They ran and returned as swift as lightning. Boom. So they have the ability to move faster than the eye can see. Without acceleration, without deceleration, they ran and returned as quick as lightning. So then look at it. Nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now we live in the days of Google. Show me a language that nobody can understand. Everybody in this world understands somebody else's language. So they're not talking about somebody down here. They speak a language. So I'm going to tell you, if you don't mind, you throw me out tomorrow if you want, I'll go home. Or I'll just hang around till my plane ticket leaves. But credible reports of contact or sightings of extraterrestrial vehicles with symbols that to this day, nobody's deciphered them. Nobody knows what they say. Nobody knows, nobody can understand the language. So I don't think these people are from here. Okay, a nation of fierce countenance. Um, have you seen totem poles? Who's on there? 
but they have a fierce countenance. Alligators have fierce countenance. You don't see a happy, smiling, friendly alligator, right? Dolphins. Dolphins will not hurt you. They have a smiley face, but alligators will eat you up, okay? So think, and, and reptiles, dragons, the, the Chinese, the Asian dragons, they all have a fierce countenance, okay? I think, I think this is connected to that, which shall not regard the person, the old, nor show favor to the young. Credible reports. You ever heard of cattle mutilations? Real things. Look at verse 51. What shall they do? Eat the fruit of thy cattle. There's several places in the scriptures where they're always going for the cattle. Now, I don't understand that. This is where I'm studying right now. So I think some really weird things are already happening, and they will continue to happen. Okay? Let's see here if I can get... I'm going to play this just for a little bit. And um, this is just a video clip of un, the, the new term for it is UAP, unknown aerial phenomenon, okay? This, this goes back to, um, I actually saw one of these stereoscopic viewers that they used to have back 100 years ago. One of the first photographs of a UFO shows up. A guy took a picture of the clouds at, for one of these stereoscopic viewers, and there is a UFO in that, in that cloud. Okay, this goes all the way back to early 1900s. Photographs have been taken. Kenneth Arnold was the guy that said he saw them skip across the air like saucers across the lake. So that, that's where they got the term flying saucers. But he actually didn't see saucer-shaped disks. He saw sort of like... Oh, they were kind of like half circle things that were flying. And what he was doing was he was flying around Mount Rainier because a week before that, an airplane had disappeared. Kenneth Arnold was, he was a, he sold firefighting equipment and he had his own plane. And he was flying back and he was flying around Mount Rainier looking for this plane that had went down. It went down a week ago. Well, they found the plane. The parachutes were still in it, and the guys that were in it were gone. Never been seen since, okay? And right about that same time that Kenneth Arnold saw these things, there was a prospector in, on Mount Rainier digging for gold that he came out and reported the exact same thing, okay? So that's 1947. 1947, Roswell. 1947, Aztec, New Mexico. 1947, you have reports of, actually, Roswell, New Mexico. The, air, the Army Air Base released the day that something crashed at Roswell. The Army released a press report on the local radio, and it went around the world saying the Army has found a crashed flying saucer. That was the official report the first day it happened. The second day is when they came out with a different story. Okay? Cover this up. Now, I am currently reading a book by a colonel, United States Army, that he is giving his detailed eyewitness account of what he saw from Roswell. Okay? Now, I have read, like I said, I've seen so many things about UFOs the past two months. Some of it is nothing but garbage. People make stories up. Have you ever heard of Project Blue Book? Project Blue Book was once the Air Force divided off from the Army, the Air Force said, we're going to cover this stuff up. So they hired several people. One was a man by the name of J. Allen Hynek. J. Allen Hynek was a physicist, and he was a huge skeptic. He did not believe in extraterrestrials, craft flying into this world. He did not believe in UFOs at all. So they sent him out to investigate. Out of the thousands and thousands of Stories that Project Blue Book investigated, 90% they classified as swamp gas, weather balloons, lights and, you know, air, sun reflecting off airplanes in the sky, actual airplanes, the planet Venus, uh, or, or whatever. In other words, 90% of the stories they identified as some regular natural phenomenon. 10%. 10%. Could not be identified. 
So J. Allen Hynek starts out not believing a word of it. When he's done and he closed Project Blue Book, he said, I believe that extraterrestrials are visiting this planet with their craft. Okay? So, and think about it. Out of all the UFO accounts that come in in the last 10 years, how many of them actually have to be true in order for, has, for us to be able to have to answer something according to Scripture? Something, just one. Something's going on in this world. Now, we are Bible believers. The Bible is the key to everything. It has all of the mysteries unlocked in this book for us. We have but to search the scriptures. Ask God to show us answers because we know that deception is coming. We know it's already here and this world is going to be deceived. But I believe there's still people out there who need to be saved and are going to be saved. Who are they, going, who are they turning to for answers right now? They're turning to YouTube. Your pastor said something a while ago. It made a lot of sense. A lot of the doctrines that people are following now from online people, these guys are not even pastors. They're just idiots with a camera. And they spout off their stupidity about God and God is this and God is a woman and the Holy Ghost is blah, blah, blah. Jesus is not God. And they spout off all this stuff and people believe it. We're supposed to be the light. Amen. So, I mean, it takes, I mean, it takes all kinds. Not everybody has to know this. Every, not everybody has to be studying UFOs. Not everybody has to be, has to, I believe in Bigfoot. I've never seen one, but I met a guy. I met a guy. He was a businessman. And he told me, looked me in the eye and told me that he had a buddy that was a greenskeeper at a, at a uh, golf course down in Fort Worth. At the time he told me this, I did not think there was any uh, Bigfoot down in Fort Worth. When that show, uh, Bigfoot, Finding Bigfoot came out, they went to Fort Worth, Dallas area because there was accounts of Bigfoot sightings down there. And I went... So this guy told me, he said, we would go fishing in those lakes there at this golf course. He said, in the middle of the night when nobody was out there golfing. And he said, I was supposed to meet my buddy out there one night. And he said, park my car and is walking across the greens. And he said, I can see my buddy out there at the pond fishing. And he said, I entered a clearing and this thing was standing watching my buddy fish. And he said, this thing had his back to me like this. And he said, when he sent me there, he turned around and went right in my eyes. And he went. The thing walked off. He wouldn't lie to me. What are these things? People see humanoid, winged creatures everywhere. Are they nuts? Some of them, yes. Are they drunk? Some of them, yes. Um, look in Ezekiel chapter 1. We believe in angels. Do we believe that angels can at times be seen? Be careful to entertain strangers. Amen. For you may be entertaining angels unawares. We have a story that happened at our church one time. A guy came walking up. We're right on the intersection of Highway 55 coming up from... Uh, Mississippi Highway 67 comes up out of Little Rock and they they intersect and our church is right there at that intersection so people sometimes walk in off the highway and we were having a barbecue out Sunday afternoon after church and a guy walked up said that he was trying to get somewhere up north and I just and here we are sitting there eating and the Holy Ghost said, Mike, feed this guy. So we fed this guy and we loaded him up with as much food as he could carry that would last him about a day or two. And two of our guys got in a church van and took him about 20 miles north, 270. If you remember the St. Louis area, 270 is the loop around St. Louis. And he was trying to get, I think, up to Chicago or something like that is what he said. So they took him up to 270 and dropped him off and they went to turn around. That man was gone. Don't know where he went. Was he an angel? I don't know, but we were careful to entertain him. 
Okay, so can they be seen? Yes. What do they look like? Sometimes they look like people, and you'd never know it. Okay, so what about devils? Can they be seen? What do some of them look like? Let's examine that, can we? Can we talk about that? Ezekiel chapter 1, is that all right? Yeah, they look like people. Ezekiel chapter 1. Uh, look at verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came from what direction? Out of the north. So we know this is God's chariot. The Bible says the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. So here we have God's chariot that he chooses to ride in. Could, God is everywhere, but he chose to make an appearance, and he's coming from a particular direction. He's coming from the north. Um, I'll tell you this. Can you think of a fable character that lives at the North Pole? Santa Claus. Okay, yeah. You go to YouTube and find some of these Apollo astronauts on their way back and forth to the moon, knowing that everybody's listening to their broadcasts. Every now and then they'd report to NASA in Houston. Houston, we see Santa Claus. Houston would respond, we copy. And that's it. That's all they'd say. Okay, what did they see? I have a list of about seven or eight Astronauts, Apollo astronauts, Gemini astronauts that admit publicly that they saw a UFO in space. Edgar Mitchell, once he, he was six man to walk on the moon, he saw them and he dedicated his life to an occult science called noetic science. Noetic science basically is name it, claim it in the occult version of it. It is the power of positive thinking. It is the power of the collective that if we all get together and can think of one particular thing, that when we do that, then that thing will take place. Edgar Mitchell dedicated, he formed the company called the Institute for Noetic Science, and he dedicated his life to studying what I say is satanic power. Okay? So anyway, behold, it came out of the north, a great cloud of fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a what? So the, the common term, the, the uh, 21st century term for that would be humanoid. Humanoid. They had a humanoid appearance. They had the appearance of a man. So they had, I guess, two legs, had the body of a man, all right? And, and yeah, and so um, they had four faces, verse 6, and everyone had four wings. Remember what I said that, word, that number four was? It always represents the gospel, always represents the spiritual realm, Okay? Uh, the four things that we wrestle against, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, high places. So that always points to that. Uh, let's see here. What else can we look at? Uh, look at in verse 12. And they went everyone straight forward. Whither the spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like the burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. What do people see when they see those strange things up in the air? Lamps and lights and amber color orbs. I could show you picture after picture after picture and video after video of people seeing amber colored orbs up in the sky. Um, and notice here, it says, It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning, meaning that they had the ability to move in such a fast way, but their movement was not like our movement. Our movement is, if we want to go 60 miles an hour, we must accelerate to 60 miles an hour. And if we want to stop, we must decelerate down to stop. They don't have to do that. Yeah, they break the laws of this three-dimensional world at will, all right? 
Uh, verse 15, Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel, which is similar to amber. And they had four, they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Have you ever seen the planet Saturn? Because look at verse 18. As for their rings, just like Saturn. Saturn, I think, is a wheel in a wheel. And think about it. What are these things up in the heavens? Are they just big rocks? I believe the Bible tells us they are angels. Now, I can't explain the physics of it. I can't explain anything beyond that. But remember, the Bible is always our anchor. You take what you can learn from this world, but you must have the Bible as the foundation of what you think about it. Okay? Because I promise you, one third of every star in the creation is coming down to this earth. Okay? God's going to do it. And then notice, whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went, thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. So, in, this is what's interesting. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel sees this, and he calls the things living creatures. Do you know what? John saw the same thing in Revelation 4. Do you know what he called them? Beasts. So take that phrase that I just read. The spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Spirit of the beast was in the wheels. Eric Van Daniken, one of the first books I ever read when I was in, I went, when I was in school, I read Bigfoot, UFO, Loch Ness Monster books, Mysteries. Who's, who's with me? All right. I got my peeps here, all right? Yeah. I, listen, I wanted to know. I wanted to know, but I grew up in church, and so I knew that God had to have something to do with it, okay? And so the, the first science project I ever did was I built a display with a UFO in it, seventh grade, okay? That was me. My wife didn't know this when I married her, so. She hears me watching some of these documentaries, and she's going, you're not getting into weird stuff, are you? And I went, honey, I've been there all my life. Okay. You see, my wife, I like my wife because she's the other half of my brain. Because I would go way out there. And she would say, honey, come back. So I come back. Amen. Verse 22, and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth above their heads. So here's these four living creatures, and they have wheels. And then they have a platform, a crystal platform on their heads. And then in verse 26, the likeness of a throne, and then a man on it. And I believe that man is Jesus Christ. Okay? This was the living chariot of God it wasn't just a piece of material it was alive it had a spirit in it now how look at this I, I read this verse a while ago the chariots of God are 20,000 even thousands of angels okay so God's chariot is an angelic being it's alive uh, think about this back in the old days the princes and the, and the dukes and the earls and the rich people and the kings, they were too good to touch the ground when they went outside. So they had this, the word, you know what the word for that is? Sedan. I learned that. They called those sedans. That's where your car, the word car came from the word chariot. Okay. So here is. Moses' version of it. Because everything that's in heaven 
has a shadow here on this earth. Paul said that in Hebrews, okay, which were a shadow of heavenly things. Okay, so God has a throne that looks like this. And there are two cherubs that overshadow that and four living creatures carried around because Moses had to see what God had in heaven so he could build the one in earth. So the four living creatures are the four Levite priests. Now I'll give you some doctrine with this. This was how it had to be carried. Right? God said it that way. Do you remember what David did? He put it on a cart. Remember how many guys are carrying this? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because that is the mercy seat. The atonement is based upon that ark, right? The blood of atonement sprinkled on that ark. Telling you, there is one way only to be saved. One way only. So when David wants to bring God's mercy seat to Jerusalem, he does it another way. And what happened? Uzzah died. It was called Perez Uzzah because of the breach of Uzzah. The ark had to sit there until David got his heart right with God. So that, I like this. The second time the ark came to David, it came on four Levite priests, and they took steps, and they stopped, and they blew a trumpet, and the people shouted. Think of what's going to happen when the Lord appears in the air. The trump of God was shouting. Isn't that cool? You just saw a picture right there. God's mercy. God, and I believe in Israel. Amen. This, they, they didn't get it the first time. The second time they will. Because Jesus is the repairer of the breach. Yep. Look what Solomon built. He caught what he put, the platform that he built for the Ark of the Covenant, he called the chariot of the cherubims. Okay? And it had how many wheels? It was four wheel drive, by the way. <laughs> so bring on the snow. Amen. Four wheels and the axle trees of the wheels were joined together at the base and the height of the wheel was a cubit and a half and the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel with their axle trees, their naves, their fellows and their spokes. How many, how many parts does it have? Why? Because it is a shadow of a heavenly thing. Because that's what that number always, 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 always indicates. It is a shadow of something heavenly. It is of the spiritual realm and it pertains to the gospel, either the real gospel or a false gospel. Always, always, always without fail. Now, we are living in a day of living chariots. Living chariots. I'm not kidding you. you Jason told you, we, I, when I got up last Thursday, our flight to Fargo had already been canceled because of that blizzard. So I told Lisa, I said, let's go to Minneapolis and we'll try to figure out a way to get to Fargo. So we got to Minneapolis and, and they told me at Delta Desk, they said, there's no flights today. There's no flights tomorrow. We can get you there Sunday. And I'm going, I'm coming back Sunday. I don't want to be there Sunday. So we found one place and they didn't have any car rentals. So I rented and I found another place at Hertz and they had a car. So they put us in a car and I had never experienced this before. We got in a car and we was headed up 94 toward Fargo. And all of a sudden, I could feel that wheel jerking. And I thought, uh-oh, something ain't right with this thing. It's a brand new car. And I noticed the wheel kept jerking on me. And I'm going, what in the world? And I noticed there's a little icon there on the dash. And it had two lines converging with the car in the middle of it. And I tried it out. And I let go of the wheel. And that wheel made sure the car stayed in between those lines on the highway. It was a smart car. It was driver assist. Okay, lane keeping. My insurance agent told me several years ago that he attended a meeting of agents and they said, we have got to figure out who's responsible for when these smart cars wreck. Because if you're the driver, you're not the driver. The car's the driver. So if the car gets into a wreck, who's paying for it? The driver's not at fault. He wasn't driving. So should the insurance company cover the driver or cover the car? 
Because the car then, if the car gets in a crash, if it's the car's fault, what part of the car was it? Was it mechanical part of the car or the software part of the car? car. If the software failed, then it's the software company that owes the money. If it's, the, I mean, this is stuff we've never had to deal with in society. Now we have to deal with it because we are going to, in the future, get into a vehicle and not even say where we're going. Have you not gotten a notification from your phone when you got in your car after work where your phone told you it was 18 minutes to your house? Because they, there is a database of you and every habit you have. And AI is learning you to be your servant for now. But it will be your God in the future. You believe me? And that's where we are. We are all, see the technology from the heavens is showing up here on the earth. I'm telling you it is. Okay, I got proof of it. I'll get to it here in a little bit. Let me tell you this story. This is real stuff. This is not drunk people in a trailer park. We saw a hazy light. Okay. Zimbabwe, 1994. There's a, there's a uh, documentary coming out this year. By the way, I am, I am told, I am told, and I could, I could show you the video. Uh, the Pentagon ran a program called ATIP, okay, Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program. They spent $22 million. They are admitting, for the first time in history, the Pentagon is admitting that there are unknown aerial vehicles in this world. And the $22 million that was spent, a guy named Lou Elizondo was head of that program. He's a good guy. He's a patriot. He's a military guy. I like him. But what he was doing was he wasn't going out and asking the average Joe what they saw in the air. He was talking to our military guys, guys on ships, guys who fly uh, aircraft for our military. He was getting what they were seeing. And tangible technology that did not originate on this planet, they have it. It's been admitted by the Pentagon. Okay? So, Lou, Lou Elizondo has said that this year, 2019, something is going to be made public. They already made public, they sent to the uh, New York Times. New York Times is not known for their UFO stories. That's the National Enquirer. New York Times ran a story a couple of years ago from information released by the Pentagon of three videos of the USS Nimitz, which is an aircraft carrier, and they followed and captured on their video cameras, their forward-looking infrared radar, what they called, they cut, one of them was the gimbal, the other one they called the Tic Tac because that's what it looked like. And this thing did maneuvers that are not possible. It ran and returned is what it did. Okay? So the, the Pentagon is admitting that this is real. This story here, 1994, there's going to be a documentary come out. It was the aerial primary school in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is, I guess it's a nation similar to South Africa. They have white, they have black, they have mixed race, and they speak very good English. And at this primary school, a UFO, that UFO... Here's another picture of it. Landed in the schoolyard. 62 students saw it. They saw the aliens coming out of it. They floated. They never touched the ground. Big black eyes. The students said that when they made eye contact with the alien, thoughts were coming into their head. Is that possible? You bet it. It's biblically possible. I'm going to show you the scriptures. So in one case, when the girl looked at this alien, she said, I felt love for him. Love. Some of the black students who have 
this tradition behind them, they called them Tokoloshes, which is a goblin or a devil from their mythology, from their folklore. They ran screaming because they said, there's a Tokolosh out there, a devil, a goblin. Because that, that's what they thought it was. But the other students were going. And the thoughts they were getting was, you're not taking good care of the planet. That is not the only case where the aliens have told the humans, you're not treating this planet well and we're going to intervene. The very first alien contact movie was in the 50s, the day the earth stood still. And Kla'atu, the alien, comes out and says, we've been monitoring this planet, you have nuclear capability, we feel we need to step in and shut this planet down because you're a threat to the rest of us. I'm telling you. And see, that's New Age stuff, isn't it? That's Mystery Babylonian Gaia worship stuff where the humans should not have dominion over this earth like God gave us. It's all contrary to the scriptures. So a, uh, a Harvard psychiatrist named John Mack went out there and interviewed these students because he said, I'm going to find out if they're lying or not. That was his specialty. And he interviewed these kids, and, he, and here's what he said. He said, I was quite convinced that this was something genuinely mysterious and real and that I needed to think about, if this is real, then what does this mean? In other words, he knew they saw something. And he said, I can't just say it's mass hysteria. They're all making it up. These kids were not lying to him. And he said, now I have to think about what I think about the universe. And I'm telling you, there isn't going to be an atheist in this world on this day. They're all going to believe it. Uh, Who heard of the Phoenix Lights? March 13, 1997. The governor of of Arizona saw it. Started making phone calls. Okay? He wanted to know what it was. And you know what he did about it? Two days later, he had a news conference and he brought out one of his staff dressed in an alien suit and he said, I found the culprit. He made light of it. My guess is he was told, yep, that's right. shut your mouth. That's right. Okay? Uh, that happened. The local news station in St. Louis ran a 30-minute documentary because the police, um, there's an Air, uh, Edwards Air Force Base is out in this area. They called them. They said, we don't have anything in the air. This thing moved around, never made a sound. I have a friend who is a commercial air pilot. I asked him, have you ever seen anything? He said, no, but I know a guy. And he said, I know a guy who knows a guy who did. And he directed me to this video. You can find it if you YouTube Aguadilla UFO. Aguadilla is in Puerto Rico. Our Customs and Border Agents helicopter spotted this thing flying over their airport. This thing had invaded US, United States airspace. So they captured it on video. The thing went out over the ocean. It split into two. Now there's two of them. And then it just disappeared. In front of your eyes, if you pull up the video, that's exactly what you'll see. In, in um, I think in 2004, the Chilean and Ecuador, the Ecuador uh, government decided to release everything that they had on UFOs. Videos, pictures, eyewitness accounts. They decided to disclose what they had seen. This happened, the Chilean Air Force, this thing, this is a video. Um, this thing started spewing out stuff. This is infrared camera. So the black indicates heat. Um, nobody knows what it was. Uh, this was what was released by the Pentagon. Again, they spent $22 million researching this stuff. Uh, here's Lou Elizondo. He was the director of ATIP. And he gave a talk and he said, here's what we're looking into from the Pentagon. We want to know how they're able to lift. We want to know what propels them. We want to know how they're controlled. We want to know what power generation they use. We want to know, I'm going to give you the term spatial temporal translation. Do you know what that means? Everything in our world is based upon two fundamental laws, time and space. We move through space through time. These disks, these phenomenon, have the ability to move and break the time-space barrier. 
There was one encounter where they scrambled some jets over the North Atlantic. They chased these things. All of a sudden, three seconds later, they were 400 miles away. Other jets were being scrambled. Okay? This, this real stuff. And see, what happens is our government, and there are companies now and groups who don't see these encounters as, this is bad. We need to defend planet Earth. They see this as an opportunity to advance humanity. Uh, according to, he said, in 2009, specific elements of the Department of Defense resist the effort based on philosophical differences. The fact that the phenomena is real is not denied. That's from our government. Uh, a man by the name of Tom DeLong. Does anybody know who that is? Okay, back in the day, right? That guy's nasty, isn't he? He's a Freemason. Do you know that? Tom DeLong is a Freemason. He was the lead singer of Blink-182. Nasty. Nasty. Don't, don't Google their lyrics. And I guarantee you somebody's going, Google their lyrics. I told you not to. This guy, I mean, he's a businessman. He owns a clothing company. He's got a new group called Angels to Airwaves. And the symbol for Angels to Airwaves is the square and the compass of masonry. Okay? And masonry. I'll talk about masonry this week. Masonry is all about the heavens joining with the earth. Okay? But anyway, he started a company called To the Stars Academy. He hired Lou Elizondo. He's hired, he's hired to work for him. Uh, top heads of development for Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, top CIA guys, top Department of Defense guys. They work for him because they have what they call tangibles. They have material and equipment from UAPs. And they are working on the physics, the science of how we as humans, because what they want is they want, these are some of the guys he has working for him. What they want is, they want to advance mankind. These people say, we are polluting the environment, we're hurting the atmosphere, uh, the, the big oil companies run everything, and they control the banks, and they control all the governments, and we actually know that they have, the ETs have power sources, that if they give them to us, we would no longer need electricity, coal, gas, oil, we would need nothing. So they are working, I mean, look what, what they're saying, to the stars. What are the stars? All of these groups. See, that used to be Shirley MacLaine stuff. That used to be Woodstock stuff. But now, the top people in science, government, economics, everything are working toward the, and advancing the day. They are saying to E.T., come down and save our planet. Yep. Real stuff. Is that even biblical? Obadiah chapter 1, though thou exalt thyself is what? The eagle. Think about what the cherub looked like in Ezekiel 1. What did it look like? The eagle is a spirit. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. What was the Apollo 11 patch? An eagle with a branch putting it on the moon. What do eagles do with branches in their... They build nests. The eagle has landed. That's the first thing he said. Okay? And... Um, Neil Armstrong, see these guys were my heroes. I loved the astronauts when I was growing up. I wanted to go to the moon. One of these days, I'll own the moon. Amen? It'll be ours. Amen? We're going to judge angels. So, Armstrong and Aldrin, after they landed in the Eagle, this is public record. They didn't broadcast it because, if you remember... Apollo 10, when it ran around the moon, Gene Cernan, uh, who was on there, he was going to say something phenomenal to planet Earth when he came around the moon, okay? 
And what he decided to do was read Genesis 1. He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was, he was reading from the King James. He was quoting Genesis 1 to planet earth as a symbol. Well, Madeline Murray O'Hara threw a fit because here is a government entity promoting religion. So when Armstrong and Aldrin landed on the moon, both of these guys are Freemasons. So they turned the mic off and they held communion on the moon as Freemasons. Public record. Okay? So, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Though thou, they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them, and though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. So I had the flat earth people telling me, oh, Hoggard believes we went to the moon. Hoggard believes we can go into, because if you believe the flat earth, you have to believe that there is a hard shell candy dome over the flat earth. They, they actually use the analogy of a snow globe. I'm not kidding you. They say, you can't go into space. It's impenetrable, which is not what the Bible says. Yeah. But God is the one who said that man would do that. So what, what To The Stars Academy wants, what The Disclosure Project wants, what people in the Pentagon want, what people all over the world want, is the technology given to us by the entities so that we could go to Mars in four hours instead of 10 months to infinity and beyond. Because we have these telescopes now and they're saying that they're spotting planets all over the galaxy. And they believe that some of those planets must be able, they're in the zone like Earth is, to be able to hold life. So man, I mean, what happened in Genesis 11? Man wants to build to the heavens. God already has that worked out for us. But they don't want to do it God's way. They don't want to do it by the cross. They don't want to recognize that Jesus. And it's like this. They're reaching to the stars and they're reaching short. They could reach to the creator. Amen. But man doesn't want to do that. So all of this is about... See, they, they have materials obtained through reports of advanced aerospace vehicles. They're telling you they have the materials in their hands. Where did they get it from? Here's what these groups are working on. Warp drive metrics. That's Star Trek stuff. But they're saying that ET can do that, and ET is going to give us that technology. Beamed energy propulsion. In other words, we could put a base on Mars where there is no electricity and beam electricity to that base on the Mars so the people on Mars have power. Brain-computer interfaces. That's already being worked on. Consciousness. And then genetics. Turn to Daniel, chapter 2. Um, I know it's a silly question. Do you have an NIV here anywhere? <laughs> Daniel, somebody, somebody go to blueletterbible.org on their tablet or the phone or whatever and pull up the NIV and look at Daniel 2 on the NIV. I'm going to show you something. Satan's covering up. He's covering up. He's covering up the plans. So churches don't believe it. They're not looking for it. They're not going to see it. God's people are going to see it. Yeah. So Daniel chapter 2, the fourth. Remember what kingdom? The fourth. And just think about, think about what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed of. The first kingdom was gold, but it was at the top. The second king was silver. Now, which is more costly, gold or silver? So it starts out, the rich starts out the great, and it descends down over time. Silver turns to brass, which turns to iron, which turns to dirt, clay. See how it descends down? The first kingdom is up on top, the second kingdom in the middle, the third. The fourth kingdom is all the way down on the bottom. And the fourth kingdom is a kingdom of opposites. You remember the, they had the face of the man, the hair of the woman? Yep. Remember what Paul warned us about? Um, what 
communion hath light with darkness. The floor of the Masonic Lodge is black and white. Light and darkness together. The yin and the yang is light and darkness together. Okay? So it's opposites. In Daniel 2, the fourth kingdom, which is the, which is the fourth beast also. The fourth kingdom, verse 40, shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So all, and I'm saying all of the groups out there that I have watched, whose speeches I've listened to, whose documentaries I've watched, whose books I've read, all of the UFO people actually want the UFOs. They want the aliens. They want these gods. They want these ascended masters to come to us and aid us and be part of us. And they think that they're benign. They think that they don't mean us any harm. But your Bible says that they're going to come here and break everything in pieces and subdue it. They're coming to rule over all of mankind. Uh, verse 40, And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay... So the kingdom shall be partly strong, partly broken. Those are opposites. Who's my welders? Anybody weld? Any welders? You ever tried to weld clay to iron? What's so funny? I'm not a welder. I'm a painter. So uh, it doesn't work. In fact, when you weld, when you get done, you got to get that slag off of there, don't you? Okay? Because it's no good. It'll weaken it. So, I, now think about it. He says, oh, let's see here. Verse 41, whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of, our, part of potter's clay, part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. There shall be in it the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, they, them, the others, those, Genesis 6. And I've got proof. I've got biblical proof that the Genesis 6 sons of God were angels. Right. Bible proof. Amen. God showed it to me a week ago. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with what? Look right here. The aliens are going to help us with genetics. It's the missing piece. Yeah, evolution, the next phase of evolution. Um, do angels die? Turn to, um, yeah, turn to 1 Corinthians 15. The word I was looking for in Daniel 2 was cleave. They should not cleave one to another. What was said about Adam and Eve? They'll cleave. And that was Christ and the church. So think of the opposites. Everything that God, think of Christ, everything that Christ is, that Antichrist is not. So with Christ, he and his bride cleave together. But with the gods, they and their bride do not cleave together. Man wants to be immortal, but he wants it in a mortal body. The opposite of us is we are going to gain immortality, but not with a mortal body. Right. Mortality cannot bring immortality. So 1 Corinthians 15 is one of the keys here. Um, verse 37. That which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. And what we know, see what we know now in the 20th and 21st century is that a seed is a bundle of DNA. It's a bundle of DNA. It's a book that God wrote. Amen? God wrote a book for every living creature. Did you hear what I said? God wrote a book for every living creature. Angels. Ezekiel said they were living Creatures. Amen? Verse 38, But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And so here's the criticism that your pastor and I have run into from, from good men. 
men who believe the Bible, but they criticize us fiercely in some cases. A man that runs a very large tract ministry that I highly recommend who believes only the King James Bible has come out very angrily against those who say the sons of God were angels. I was, I was going to try to get him to do our Bible conference in May. And I said, I can't, I wouldn't do that. I don't want that. I love the man. I pray for him. I don't know him, but I know a guy who does. And he says, he's a good guy. He loves the Lord. Okay. But he doesn't get it. Okay. He thinks we're all reading the book of Enoch. No, no. Because they say angels don't have bodies. Genesis 18. The two angels ate cornbread and beans Amen. and butter. Southern comfort food. Amen. And a calf. And they had their feet washed. They were tangible. They grabbed Lot and his wife and his two daughters by the hand and led them forth. And the men of Sodom wanted to know them. So your Bible says... Verse 38, but God giveth it a body as it pleased him, and to every seed his own body. So if it has a body, it has seed, it has DNA. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there's one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. Count what he, how many times he said that. Four. Are there, earth, are there spiritual angel men? Are there sp angel beasts? Are there angel fishes? Yes. Are there angelic birds? Yeah. And then look at verse 40. There are also celestial what? So God said they had bodies. God said they had bodies. And bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the terrestrial is another. So there is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. This is you, by the way. Sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. Sown in, dis sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Sown in weakness, raised in power. Sown in natural body and raised in spiritual body. Four things he says here. The patterns keep repeating. When you look, when you look for them, you just see them everywhere. Uh, it is sown a natural body, it's raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Look at there. Look at your Bible. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made. So then he says in uh, verse, let me turn here. Verse 15, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at what trump? The Donald. No, just kidding. <laughs> For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So this body is not, we cannot take this body to heaven. I don't want it. Amen. It's giving me nothing but trouble. Okay? Amen. So I don't want it. So, but what man has planned is to become a God, but against God. There's Tom DeLong. There's this Freemason stuff. Wow. Now, he has as his motto, et ducit mundus per luce, which means to lead the world to the dawn. But you see Latin words there, luce. Lucifer, the dawn is morning. Lucifer, son of the morning, to lead the world to who? Dun, dun, dun. Here's what Albert Pike said about the square. The square, therefore, is a natural and appropriate symbol of this earth and the things that belong to it and are of it or concern it. The compass is an equally natural and appropriate symbol of the heavens and of all celestial things and celestial natures. So he's saying the square and the compass. It may be said that, the, that in man, the divine is united to the human. There it is right there. That's your fourth kingdom. They are going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. Masonry is all about it. 
the UFO movement is all about it. The genetics scientists are all about it. Top people in governments all over the world. You are going to see more and more and more disclosure of what governments have been involved in pertaining to the angels, the gods, the devils, the sons of God, the aliens. Look in Hebrews 11. Guess what we're going to fight? In Hebrews 11, that's our faith hall of fame, right? You have people of faith. They didn't die. They didn't go to heaven by a different gospel. They believed. Amen. Abel believed. Enoch believed. He had faith. Yep. Noah believed. Abraham believed God. They all believed. So now look in verse. Uh, let's see here. Verse. 32. What shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, attained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the who? And the literal interpretation of the word angel is they were not born here. I'm not a native of Minnesota. I'm actually not a native of Missouri. I was born in Arkansas. Okay? These Somalians you see running around, they were not, they are alien to us in every way. Their language, their dress, their religion, their, their culture, their character, everything is alien to How do they think we're going to integrate and get along? It doesn't work out very well. I, mean, I don't have anything against them, but they are a different type of people. Okay? It would be like fusing opposites. It would be like trying to weld iron to clay. Okay? And so think about it. That kingdom, that fourth kingdom, is automatically divided against itself. So what's going to happen to it? Every kingdom divided against itself falls. And what happened to that kingdom? What happened to all those kingdoms? They all fell. Uh, let's see here. Where was we? Genesis 6. The sons of God, the daughters of men. I have biblical proof that they were gods angels uh, go to Job uh, I, I'll give you two things in the Old Testament the phrase sons of God is always about angels in the New Testament however the phrase sons of God is always us but See, we've been given the title sons of God. We haven't been given the body of the sons of God. We don't know what it's going to appear like, do we? Okay. But when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Who is the son of God? And we will shine as lights amidst a dark world. Amen. And there are some angels in heaven that are living in our house. Amen? God's going to kick them out. And we're going to go take their place. When the Israelites went into, the, went into Canaan land, when Joshua led them in there, did they have to build houses and cities? No. They were already there. God kicked out the former inhabitants and let his people move in their place. That's a picture of what I believe is going to happen. Okay? Where did I say to go? Job. Maybe I ought to go there. So in Job 1, what time is it? 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, something like that? I heard that. 
6.30. Job chapter 1. Um, now there was a day, verse 6, when the sons of God came to present themselves for the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So it looks like angels. Job chapter 2. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Looks like angels. Turn to Job 38. And then I'm going to hit you with it. I'm going to give you disclosure. Job 38. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? He said, where were thou? Where were you, Job? When I laid, verse 4, when I laid the foundations of the earth. Where were you, Job? Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. They were stars. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get weird. <laughs> and somebody's going, you've been there. I, um, you know, I heard of Roswell. Did you? Cool. I think you're there now. So anyway, <laughs> um, you know, the story was a, uh, a ship crashed and then the story was it was a weather balloon. Okay. Uh, Colonel Corso was a man who was assigned a post. The story was that they collected up an intact saucer-shaped craft, put it on the back of a truck, and they retrieved alien bodies. General Corso, or Colonel Corso, said that when they stopped over, I think he was stationed in Kansas. I'm going to have to, I'm just now reading his testimony. But he said that they'd stopped over there and one of his buddies said, you got to come see this. And he says that night, he said, I saw that creature, the dead body of an extraterrestrial being. Um, he said, I tried my life to forget about it. Then later on, he's in a position at the Pentagon where um, his superior pulls him aside and says, I'm going to hand something over to you. He said, what is it? He said, it's this file cabinet what's in it and he said he opened it up and there were parts materials files of the ship that crashed at roswell there was another one that crashed at aztec new mexico you can research that and uh but i've i've watched the testimonies of not not men behind a screen who didn't want their name because anybody can make that stuff up. I can go and make a video and change my voice and silhouette my image and say, I saw the aliens at Roswell and I saw the ship. And I, and I can make that stuff up. And there is some of that stuff on the Internet. But now, because a guy by the name of Stephen Greer, he started gathering guys that were already in the Pentagon. They were already in the military or they had served. They served at nuclear bases. They served at aircraft bases. They served at Army Base at Roswell. They served in various places. And they came forward in a, in a uh, press conference in the year 2000. It's called the Disclosure Project. And they came forward and they testified of their first-hand knowledge of alien intervention in our country they told stories they said i'm prepared to testify before congress so it's no longer guys who are afraid to come forward with their names and their testimonies because they're afraid the men in black are going to kill them these guys are coming forward with their reputation in their hands saying i'm willing to testify because i think our government needs to tell everybody what's been going on there was actually part of the wikileaks thing where they stole John Podesta's emails. You remember that? Yeah. Tom DeLong was in contact with John Podesta. I have the emails where he is telling Podesta, uh, let's do this thing. Let's get, if, when Hillary gets in office, 
is she going to disclose the government's files on ET? And Podesta said, when she gets in office, we're going to do everything we can to make sure. Her and Bill did all the nightly talk shows before the election saying that they knew that, that the government knew that we had craft, that we had ETs, and that when they got in office, they were going to make sure that the government released all the files. I have the emails. I've seen it. So I'm seeing all this stuff, and I'm going, these are angels. These are devils, right? How can they crash a ship at Roswell and die? And so for years, I never said a word because... I've tried over the years to build a reputation of myself that if I say it, I'm going to show you the witness and the testimony of the word of God. This is what God said. So you can believe it or not, but this is what God said. So I would never talk about it. And so last Thursday, I mean, all you got to do is ask God. Ask God for answers. It may take a week, it may take a month, it may take a year or 10 years, but is it not worth it to hear from God? Amen? So, God, the Holy Ghost, always likes to quote Scripture. That's how you know it's God. Turn to Psalm 82. Let's, let's read this chapter. We'll kind of close it out for tonight. But let's close out with a bang, all right? So what I'm telling you is, I believe it now. I believe it. I believe that not only at Roswell, but in Ecuador, Peru, Germany, Great Britain, there have been places where ships have crashed and dead alien bodies. I believe it now. Psalm 82, God standeth in the congregation of who? The mighty. And who are the mighty? He judgeth among the who? The gods. Who are the gods? The angels. The good and the bad. They are immortals. That's what I was trying to say a while ago. Angels don't die. They have immortal bodies. They're meant to live forever. The good and the bad. So that's what makes them gods. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? And that's to man, Selah. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Look at that. The sons of God, the children of the Most High, are gods. You see it now? Look at the very next verse. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Princes are principalities. They're spirits. So the Holy Ghost said that, said that verse to me. You shall die like men. Now, out of the mouth of two witnesses or three shall every word be established. Is there another place in the Bible where it says the gods are going to die? Uh, it does, but I don't have it up on the screen. Turn, turn to, um, turn to uh, Isaiah 14. Charge. Isaiah 14, charge. I've read Isaiah 14, 12, 13, and 14 until I was blue in the face. I can quote it from memory. I never read verse 11. Verse 12 is, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Who's Lucifer? He's the devil. Look at verse 11. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. Where's Lucifer headed to? The grave. Look at verse 15. After he says, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Ver look at verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the what? Man. The man. Now turn to Ezekiel 38. Charge. 
We know. No, Ezekiel, what did I say? 38, 28. Ezekiel 28. We know that Ezekiel 28, the prince of Tyrus, is the anointed cherub that covereth. We know that. So look at Ezekiel 28. Look at verse 1 or verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, a prince, a principality. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a what? A man and not God, though thou said thy heart is the heart of God. Three testimonies now in your Bible that said these gods, these spirits, these angels, Lucifer himself, these gods are gods, they're princes, but God is going to allow them to die like men. They're fallen like princes, he said. So here's what I think happened. Their first estate is in heaven. That's what Jude said. But they left their first estate. They come down here mingled among men. God let them fall and die like men. That's what I believe. So, I mean, here, now here's why I'm saying this. I believe there's going to come a time when at some point, I don't know how it's going to happen. Maybe all of a sudden you're going to see something on the moon that shouldn't be there. Or maybe UFOs are going to start popping up and hanging around over cities and countries all over the world. And people's going to go outside and go, I'm seeing a UFO. Or the government's going to start releasing photos, video, dead bodies. Who knows? I don't know how it's going to happen. But I think at some point, this world is going to be brought to a day where a strong delusion is going to take place. And I think that strong delusion is related to the gods who are coming down here. Somehow, some way. Okay? God's people are not going to be fooled by it. God's people are not going to be fooled by it. So again, this may be your area where you like to study this and you like to get into this. Or you may be like my wife and there are other issues that she wants to deal with from scriptures. And I'm all for that. God doesn't make us all alike. But I think God, even from the weakest of us, is not going to let us fall for that strong delusion.